Hi there and welcome to a new video. I'm really glad to be back here because I want to share with you today five tips to avoid getting lower back pain and performance pain when you're using the treadmill. And this is something that I used to experience a lot. And recently I was using the treadmill and I was on the incline and I thought about this, how difficult it is sometimes to get a really good treadmill cardio session without getting that pain afterward especially if you already have hip tightness and if you experience sciatica as well but there are some really key tips that i'm i'm really excited to share with you today that i think will really benefit you if you love to use a treadmill or even outside if you like to walk or jog outside and you feel that you always get the pain right after or during the activity so as I said, I used to get this pain a lot um, whenever I wanted to do cardio because when I used to have performance syndrome as well as when I was also struggling with a disc herniation, so I was getting a lot of sciatica as well. Um, so all really I could do is use the machines for cardio. I couldn't do any jumping anymore. I couldn't use the, the jumping rope or do plyometrics, so machines were kind of the easiest way for me to get my cardio done. So of course I would get on the treadmill and then I'm walking, but then usually walking slowly would be okay. And then as I'm increasing the intensity or if I am increasing the incline, I just start to get that nerve pain shooting down my right hip and it would just start to creep in slowly. And then sometimes when I'm done, I could feel more tightness later on during the day. So it was something that I struggled with. So I definitely understand if this is something that you're struggling with right now, but I wanna share with you what I have been doing the past few years, because there are some really important techniques that you can do while on the treadmill, as well as right before you step on the treadmill that I think would really benefit you so that you can do cardio, because I know that we don't want to completely stop doing cardio or the activities that we love and enjoy doing. So the very first tip or technique that I want to share is to avoid bending over. When you are on the treadmill, I want you to pay really close attention to your posture. And usually what happens is that we tend to either look down on our phones or we have like a device, we're watching a TV show or we're reading on, on our Kindle or phone. So we just tend to bend over a little bit and also if you're using the incline that happens even more so when you are on the treadmill just try your best to keep your back as straight as possible you always want to have that neutral posture even when you are watching something like usually what i would do is um, i would just look down with my eyes but i would avoid just doing that looking down because right away just as i'm looking down i can see my back rounding so you want to avoid that because you don't want to put any pressure on your spine and you know we don't want to compress our spine when we are on the treadmill by that bending over and if you're using the incline again it, it tends to exaggerate that bend because you're on the incline and you're trying to resist the incline so you will tend to bend over a little bit and i i would notice that on the mirror so use the mirror as a guide if there is one if you're using it at a gym because then you can see your posture you can just check to see if you are keeping your back straight and avoiding that forward lean and the next uh the next tip is related to the first one is to avoid flexing your neck so again just looking down the phone texting like this or if you have a book and you're reading the book what happens is that when the moment that you flex your neck, there is more pressure put on the spine and there will be more spinal compression. And again, your other, the rest of your body is going to follow. So your back is going to round, your lumbar spine is going to round, and then you're probably going to end up with tightness and pain later on. So always maintain that neutral spine when you are using the incline. And one thing that I kind of switched into is that I used to read a lot during the treadmill, so I would have my Kindle in front of me, and I, even though I would try to resist that, but my head, I can't help but have my head down. So I have switched to using audiobooks more, so I would just listen to audiobooks while on the treadmill, just keep my head straight and looking forward. So, because I don't wanna just spend 20 minutes or 30 minutes on a treadmill just doing nothing. I always like to just multitask, and for me, just, um, Education is really important. I love reading books. So just um, 
mixing these activities for me is just a great way to do cardio as well as to do my reading do the cardio educate myself as well as uh, keep my posture in mind the third tip is to take breaks so usually what i would do is i would be on the treadmill especially on the incline if it's really challenging i will go for a minute and then i will step outside of the treadmill for a little bit i will have a sip of, sip of water and then i will step back in this quick break is usually about 10 seconds and it really helps me to just take a break to breathe, recheck, check in with my posture, readjust anything I need to readjust. And also if your body's getting tired and fatigued, then you give it that short break to recover. So definitely don't be scared to take a break. And actually interval training has way more benefits than just doing steady state cardio. So I love to do interval training on the treadmill because I can do one minute or 50 seconds and then I take a break for 10 seconds. I have a sip of water and then it allows me to take a break. Especially if you get that hip tightness, just taking a break allows your body to recover for a little bit before you jump back in. The next tip is to spend some time activating your core before you step on the treadmill. And I know that a lot of people, they do the treadmill as a warm up, but for me, um, and you can definitely do that. Usually what I do is I always have my cardio sessions after my workouts where I usually would have worked on my core already. But if you do feel pain every time you get on the treadmill, I highly encourage you to do just two or three exercises quickly on the mat where you do some core activation because that will allow your core to be active while you're on the treadmill and it will protect and support your spine so that there isn't any pressure or as little pressure as possible put on the spine because we don't want our muscles to be completely dormant. We always want our muscles to just be active and moving. And I also love to, when I'm on the treadmill, I love to practice diaphragmatic breathing. So taking deep belly breath and contracting my core and then releasing and doing that for about 10 deep breaths because that will make sure your core is continually active throughout the whole session. It just really helps to support and protect your spine from any further damage, especially if you have sciatica and if you have a disc herniation, any related disc issue, just activating your core before any activity is going to just help you support your spine while it's healing. And also related to that, I encourage you to do some glute activation as well. And you don't have to necessarily do an exercise, but I would recommend it. But if you don't have time, a really quick way to activate your glutes is to just contract your glutes while you're walking. So every time you make a step forward, the other, the other leg is extending behind you. So squeeze the glutes when you're extending that leg. And then again, when you're alternating doing the other leg, then squeeze. So every time you're stepping forward, you're squeezing your glutes activating your glutes and keeping them engaged because again that will provide a lot of support around your hips and the glutes and the core they work together so you're both working on your core and your glutes you're not only going to get an amazing workout because now you're working your muscles even more and then you're mindful of your body than just walking and looking around or reading something or watching a show then your focus is on whatever you're doing not on your body but when you are actually engaged with your body is just for me it, it, i always would get amazing workouts when i do that and remember that doing exercise with proper form is always going to make the exercise more challenging and more effective we can also apply that to just using the treadmill so when you are using the treadmill you're really focusing on your muscles and squeezing your glutes keeping your core engaged keeping your posture in check you are going to get a much better and more effective cardio session it can just be shorter but you're going to feel much better than if you would just do a quick session or long session where you know you're completely focusing on something different and you're not activating your muscles they're not working as they should um and you may end up with more pain later on and avoid exercising for many days after that. So always focus on quality exercises, regardless of what type of exercise you're doing and which cardio machine you're using. And again, I want you to apply these techniques, not just the treadmill, but also when you are walking outside or if you are running outside, these things still apply. Um, so usually i when i'm walking outside i'm still keeping my posture in check 
I'm practicing diaphragmatic breathing, I'm keeping my glutes engaged because it's, you know, it's actually even more challenging when you're outside because you're going sometimes against the wind, the surface is not flat, so you're challenging your body more, but the, the techniques will still apply. And remember that you don't have to completely stop doing the things that you love to do just because you are in pain. Again, it's just about knowing your limitations and working around them. So if doing 30 minutes of a treadmill usually hurts you, then maybe go back to just doing 15 minutes with really good proper form, and then you can increase that little by little as your threshold for of pain goes up. So this is really kind of the secret to exercising without pain is just knowing where your limit is and just always staying below that limit. And then as your body starts to recover and it gets desensitized to these pain triggers, then you can add a little more and then keep tracking and keep noticing what's happening and, you know, readjusting. It's really a journey of self-discovery and knowing, you know, just learning so much about your body and choosing the things that make you feel good and give you positive results. You know, you always have to keep in mind that you need to adjust things and um, modify things to your current level and your current limitations. And I really want to emphasize on the, world, on the word current because it just means it's right now, but it doesn't mean that you're always going to have those limitations, but you just want to start there. You want to approach things a little differently because you're in this healing journey. So it's 100% okay to modify things and adjust things to your current level. And one more last tip, if you get neck and shoulder pain while on the treadmill, usually what happens is that if you're on the treadmill and you, you're using the bars, you're resting your arms on the bars for a long period of time, um, a lot of times people, they do that for help, for assistance, so that, especially if they are on the incline, they do that to rest. And that can put a lot of tension on your shoulders. So if you have any weaknesses there, then that can trigger pain. So again, just make sure you keep your arms low and you know, you just walk in normally. Don't use the bar for support. If you need to take a break, again, just step out of the treadmill to breathe, take a breather and then back in. Just avoid using the bar because again, you're, it's going to assist you. Um, so you're not really getting the most out of the workout. I would just recommend you reduce the intensity, you reduce the incline to what you can do without using the bar. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you have any other tips that has helped you personally with using the treadmill cardio machines while in pain, definitely don't hesitate to comment below and I will see you guys soon with a new video.